Hey everybody, this is Lord Magicus, and we're playing more Mono Blue Merfolk in Modern. We're here with Armchair General, and we are on the play. So let's take it. Hopefully we won't be here for another hour. That would be nice. <laughs> we're up against Bad Player for Life. Well, let's hope they're true to their namesake. Oh fuck, it's a Lurus deck. Well, we're going to keep this. When we have Vial and a bunch of one-drops, so that's fine. What are you going to do to me that I haven't already done to myself? Force the negation, eighth of Vile, turn one. <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty sad. I, I won't lie. But the only reason I like to keep a hands like this is because I do have stuff like this. Oh, we're up against Mill. All right. You know what? This is fine. I can deal with this. All right. Mill is not that bad. I will laugh my ass off if you get bodied. No, no, we can we can live through this. So we're gonna play the curse catcher and then probably vial in the tide shaper. Why not double curse catcher? Well, we're gonna hold up the other curse catcher in case we need it. That's fair. might be the single dumbest hand I've ever seen you keep. It's pretty dumb, I'm not going to lie. But the reason we want to play Tide Shaper here is because it'll be a 2-2, two -two, and mm -hmm. uh, we can then trickster down the crab next turn and then attack through it. That's after they mill you for 6, though. Whatever, it's fine. They ha the, the thing about this deck is they have to actually resolve a bunch of spells in order to win the game. Well, I mean, they could just resolve 4 crabs without you having an answer and laugh. I mean, that's possible, but it seems like that's not what's going to happen here. That's not bad. I guess let's play the Curse Catcher first. We're going to actually tick up to three. I think I'm going to, actually. I have a I'm lot of... I'm not your choice. You're, um, you are ticking up to three, sir. I guess I could trick through this right now so they don't get to mill me. Yeah, do that. And then I can attack through it. I have a feeling that they're about to push you, maybe? They could fatal push here. Well, we are forcing their hand with this curse catcher, which is kind of nice. I guess probably play Kira first. Air quotes around the word play. I guess Faloon might be okay to go as well. Oh, wow, that was the wrong play, my man. Uh, no. We're not doing <clears> that. <throat> uh -uh. Nope. Try again. And I still get to attack for two, which is more than I intended to hit them for this turn. They shocked themselves, which, or they bolted themselves this turn, and they didn't even get to mill me for it, which is great. Bolted themselves, didn't get to mill you, and lost a card. You yeah. lost a card. Uh, it's pretty close between Spaloon and Kira here. Spaloon will be you... indestructible, and we have Curse Catcher, so... My mugga is saying Kira. And we're protected from Tasha's hideous laughter right now with this Curse Catcher, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, until they play another land. Well, hopefully that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm just saying that I'm just waiting for the day that Tasha's hideous laughter with, like copy spells is a thing. No, we're definitely ticking up. Beautiful. Boy, that means you can now bounce something with Brazen Borrower. Uh, I could bounce this Ruin Crab. <laughs> exactly. Goodbye, Crab. I guess the thing is, do I want to play the Spaloon first? Isn't it only when it attacks that you draw a card? Yeah, but I I might want to play it just to give everything protection from removal spells. I mean, yeah, go for it then. I guess, I don't know, I, I could wait till their turn to do it. I guess the alternative is if I play Kira now, then all their removal is just terrible. I mean, their removal is terrible anyways with your uh, god because you have Curse Catcher still. Yeah, alright, you know what, I think maybe we, we're going to go Kira first and we're going to borrow her and bounce this crab and then attack him for five. Well, actually, hold on. The counter-argument here is if you go with the god first, if you then hit a lord next turn, you just win. 
Yeah, but it's, it's not like I could vile a lord in on three. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Never mind then. Let's just see what they do. Because if they don't respond with removal, like Kira's just going to destroy them. Mm hmm. Them. Oh no. <gasps> Like the what the best thing they can do is like drown in the lock of the petty theft. Okay, so we get in five damage. This is a really important five damage because now um, if we draw a lord, we do win next turn because we can just play it and it's we're, we're protected with island walk here. Makes sense. So they can play the crab again. Yeah, like, we, they're very close to dead here, and we, they only, yeah, we still have 44 cards in our deck. Like, I feel reasonably safe. Oh, that Field of Ruin's not going to hit shit. Now, you can't activate this. I don't have any non-basics. You're not going to be milling me anymore with this fucking ruin crab off this field of ruin. I will not play a non-basic for you to actually hit with that. They have to... So, like, yeah, generally... and I, I watch Stickball Russ play uh, mill from time to time. And if anybody here has uh, ever played... Okay, this is definitely something we want to counter. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's even worth it. No, it is, because our curve is reasonably low, and it's... So, basically, Mill has to resolve about three Mill spells in order to actually win the game. And if you can keep them from resolving, like, the three spells, like, it's very hard for them to actually Mill you out. So, countering that right there actually makes a huge difference. Like, I can play... Actually, this is good, because I can play Borrower and the Sphaloon here. Um, so they are going to die, like, next turn, pretty much no matter what they do. So they take four damage here, and we just have, like, a million attackers next turn. They have to mill 40 cards out of our deck, which just seems impossible. They can block two and then take four, so that's fine. Probably one of Violin's Faelun, right? I don't think they run, like, Wraths or anything. But even if they tapped out for a Wrath, I could just flash in Borrower. <laughs> this just makes it much harder now. Because now anything they want to hit our creatures with is just going to get countered. Probably. Because they have to spend, like, two to three mana on it. And they're not going to exile 40 cards from my deck and kill off my board and deal with this Brazen Borrower. It's just not happening. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so against this deck, we actually want uh, the Force of Negations, and we want the Counter Spells. What the fuck do we take out, though? Um, they have some removal. It, there's not, like, an insane amount of removal, though, so maybe Kira could come out. It has Flying, which is nice. Actually, you know what? Sphaloon might want to come out here because it is a little bit slow against this deck. I don't know if we need Sphaloon here. Yeah, to be to be perfectly honest, I don't actually know if if we want Sphaloon. The only reason mm -hmm. I like Kira is because like it does get through stuff like Drown in the Lock. But I mean, Sphaloon is slow. We want to kill them quickly. So I like, it might be worth depending on how many hmm? crabs we're expecting. Uh, I don't think I like Harbinger here either. Harbinger seems pretty bad. We still have 30 creatures in our deck, and we have 7 counter spells now. Dismember is definitely something to consider here. Um, dismembering a crab is not the end of the world. They didn't reveal Luris, right? Or did they? No, I think they did. Yeah, they so. did. Because all they run is crabs. They're their only permanents. Uh, you know what? They might bring in... Uh, ensnaring bridge it's possible so maybe we want to keep brazen borrower just in case 
It's also stuff to play at flash speed and hold up counter spell, so that might be fine by itself. I don't. Tide Shaper, I guess, is just a beat. So it's a yeah. 2 2 beater. Like, that's all we need it to be. Honestly, I think this is fine. Like, we still have 30 creatures. We have lots Actually, of. You know what? I would drop the Merfolk Tricksters for the dismembers. Uh. I kind of want to keep the Tricksters just because I, I want stuff that I can play at flash speed and hold up counter spell. Okay. I don't think the dismembers matter that much. I could be wrong. Maybe we'll change your mind, but like this deck is not usually living long enough to um yeah, in order to uh really get Luris to do anything useful. This this is a hand. <laughs> I don't actually think we can keep this. This is way too sketchy. Mm. We have to go so, like ether vial and negations. I, I think you could keep it on the strength of force of negation is my argument. I don't like the idea that I have to protect vial and I have basically no clock against them. Because I, mean, I, I, I like I'm not good. putting a creature into play until like turn three and that's not good. I don't even have another Merfolk for Silver Gale Adept. I'm mulliganing this. This is much better. This is ins exactly. insanely much better. Um, Power? I think I just put force in the bottom. Wait, no, the vial. I you guess just do this without vial because you have the the cavern. That's true. I could just put the. You know, I hate doing that, but like it might actually be correct to do it here. It gives you the fastest clock, I think. Yeah, we're gonna keep this. We'll put vial in the bottom. I like. And then this. you have power to pitch the force. If we need to, yeah. Just because, like, I guess the force matters in case they play like explosives or bridge or something. Atosh is when you can't have it, respond to it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's Ooh, very wait, good. Um, was there a reason to play caverns over? No, there was no because I don't want to let them know that I have cavern of souls. They're not. They can't counter the curse catcher there. So. That's what I was trying to think in my head because, yeah. Uh, okay, I've been playing too so much they're on uh, but... Crab Battle right now. Enemy Crab Battle. Ooh, that's going to mill you for... Six? Twelve? Isn't it three, three? Oh no, yeah, when they crack the, the Flooded Strand, yeah, that's going to suck. This is why I was saying dismembers are important. Well, I guess, maybe. Maybe we'll... If game three, we might reconsider them. Well, they don't have an island in play right now, that's worth noting that <laughs> no i still yeah, think I... I need to play the lord of atlantis oh no you absolutely lord of atlantis this turn i don't know maybe we'll just attack and see what happens but tide shaper might end up getting pitched to force all right let's just we'll we'll just skill check them to see if they know how this works <laughs> okay they figured it out they they found the line. <laughs> but they I was just thinking, like, he'll check fucking what? <laughs> it's going to be really dangerous for them if they crack that flooded strand, though. Because we're just going to play another it. Lord of Atlantis and be like, yeah, boy. It's your boy. Don't, oh, no. no. Are you fucking no, kidding no. me? No! <laughs> fucking. Like my god. We might actually just die to crabs. Man, One dismember was not going to make a difference against this. But they are in so much trouble if they actually ever crack this flooded strand. Don't seem to have another land drop. There's, they, oh, they have to find an island with this thing, so... They could mill me for, like, nine cards with this, but at the same time, if they mill me for nine cards, then they're taking uh, six damage this turn. Hmm. Uh, yeah, still have to play the Lord of Atlantis here, because that way, they they can't reasonably block, because even if they do, like, their creatures will die, so. And I guess if we draw another Lord, they're actually dead next turn, right? So, this is good. I think? And if you... Well, yeah, because that makes you swing... No, you wouldn't be dead. No, they'll be at only... one. Oh? Oh, ho, ho. So... Force. This is 100%. Oh, they no, no, no. They just want to mill me here. All right, that's fine. You just let them... They just let you take six off the top. 
this is still okay. And we might actually be in Pitch Brazen Bar where land so we can play Silvergill Adept. So we they, they exiled one, two, three, four lords. Ugh, that's we only have two left in the deck. So we're on two turns to kill them. Curse catcher it. I have to. I don't even know what it is, but curse catcher it. Uh, yeah. Oh god, curse catcher it. No, no, you can just curse No, I can't. Wait. It only instants or sorceries. Um, I thought it was non-creature. You know what? I could let this resolve and just use Brazen Bar where to bounce it. Mm. No, that's unnecessarily greedy. Are, is it, though? Because, like, they can't crack it right now. Yeah, but the thing is, you do that, and then, like, I, I don't know, it just feels dangerous. I, think, I would just force it, get rid no, of it. No, I think that we're. I'm gonna let this happen. Work. I'm gonna bounce it with with the fucking brazen borrower. Because I don't think they have any more lands. No, they don't. They're fucked. And if they have force here, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's attack. Oh, you, you, you hit another brazen borrower, so who cares? Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. If they have specifically uh, force and negation, your you're going to get that uh, engine explosives in face. No, I'm not. I'm just going to sack the curse catcher and counter the force of negation. Oh, right. You can do that. Mill is usually a really good matchup for Merfolk. It's a good matchup for most decks. Burn being the big exception. However, Mill is also pretty good against stuff like Hammer Time just because of Tasha, so... Yeah... So here, Oddly enough, it's awful against uh, Tron, though. Or not here, Tron, I though. think they're dead. Like, they have to mill 35 cards and deal with, like, Lord of Atlantis, and I don't think they can. I will just use Force to protect. Yeah, we win. So there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh-huh. It was possible they could have had, like, Force of Negation and Sandbag the land there, but I was willing to take that risk. So... We could, yeah, we got there. I mean, I don't know. Like, it just seems like the safest bet to me. But like they, I, I, I don't know. I soul read them, and I just felt like they didn't have a third land there. So, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, let me know. Would you have done that in your game? Um, because what it was turn four, right? They didn't play a land on. Well, if it was me, I wouldn't have been playing mill in the current meta. Or not what? They didn't play a land on turn three, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't play a land on turn three, which means on turn four, the chances that they had a land were just really low. So, that's why I was willing to take that gamble. Just in case, for some reason, we needed the force of negation for, like, in case they brought in, like, sweepers or something I didn't know about. I don't know. In any case, uh, that puts us to 2-0. That's good. Excellent. Please, thumbs up in the comments. Leave me some uh, nice messages. I, I read every one of them, and I appreciate them. So uh, That's all we've got for today. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you again tomorrow.